a diversified mining and minerals company previously known as Anglo Val Mining. Yep, that's its corporate history, but of course it is uh, renamed when Patrice Motsepe takes control of it, uh, probably about 10 years ago. Interesting thing though is that in addition to Asmang, it's got a bunch of other assets in the coal, platinum arena. It also has a stake in Harmony, which hasn't done it any favors in recent times. Market cap, 17.6 billion rand. Price to earnings ratio, 6.2. Dividend yield here, 7.4. Habrant, off air a minute ago, you were saying that this African Rainbow Minerals has about 60% exposure uh, to iron ore as its base case. Yeah, I think from an EBITDA perspective, about 50 from revenue. Um, they got about 25% from platinum exposure. Uh, they got some coal assets that's actually starting to turn now and some copper assets in Zambia as well. And then they got a little bit of a stake in Harmony. It, it, it did a, in, the, in the past, I think it was 13 or 14% of Harmony. It, it, it was worth a lot more than what it's now. Mm. I mean, if you go back to Papua New Guinea transaction those days, they could have probably got more for their 13% stake than what Harmony is worth at the moment if they would have sold a few years back. But mm. so gold's been unloved as well. Yeah, I um, spoke to Graham Briggs recently. He still thinks that Papua New Guinea will come to <laughs> fruition for yeah. Harmony Gold. It's just a matter of time. Well, I hope so for their sake. But <laughs> at the moment, it's not a revenue play. It's a bit of an investment play. But they get in payments on that every year. But the iron ore are the big from a, a EBITDA and so forth point of view. And that's probably going to decline. We already know what's ASMANG's numbers. So it's going to decline with at least half as well. So certainly those numbers look very cheap. But it's still an iron ore play. So let's uh, get the, the graph back up on the African Rainbow Minerals. Looking a bit sick there, but that's <laughs> what you'd expect. Um, because it hasn't just been the core iron ore asset that's been marked down. Also the Two Rivers Platinum Mine, people have been anxious about margins and so on there. And Kamati Nickel is another interesting asset they've got. Plus they've got something out in Indonesia, which is interesting in the iron ore environment. So I think they've remained uh, cautious and They've looked at some of their assets. They've shuttered some and mothballed, for example, that uh, chrome smelter in Mashadadorp that you see if you're driving down the N4. So you're saying a, a solid management team behind this one. Again, it comes back to demand supply. Yeah. Constrained supply could ultimately lead to a kick up in the shape. Well, race. the interesting thing is that for many years, this is how the mining industry was viewed as a bit of a you know good years, bad years kind of thing. But that period from the late 90s through until you know, 2010, 2011 was such a fantastic period of sustained price increases. We all got used to the idea that these were must have investments in your portfolio. Are you saying that that has changed? It has changed for me because I think China's industrialization is sort of beginning to run its course. I don't think there's any obvious candidate for a massive resource intensive economy following them. India, maybe the African continent in time to come. But I think that's going to be quite moderated. Would you, would you go as far as to say this is a sunset industry? No, what I think is going to happen is we're going to have years of sideways to down performance beyond which then everybody forgets about them. It becomes a very underappreciated sector of the economy and then you might have some slight earnings improvement which could get people slightly excited. You, you make your Gabrand smile <laughs> on the sideline <laughs> uh, the side there, Gabrand. Yeah, I'm pretty really close to what Paul is saying, you know, a bit of improvement and so forth. I think it's already a bit of a, uh, a forgotten industry lo mm. globally and locally. If you look at what the guys have in their portfolios, most of these fund managers locally and abroad have zero exposure to, to resources, which I think might be a mistake at where we are at levels. I'm not saying the iron ore producers are the right ones to buy, but we're certainly looking at discounted uh, Companies, we we're sitting with uh, Arsenal Metal locally that's trading at a 0 0.25 of price to book. We're sitting with even uh, African Rainbow Minerals trading at a 0 0.67 of price to book. People were paying lots of dollars and rands for these companies not so far back, five six years back. And I think supply will disappear. That's how commodities work, and they will come back again. Uh, we can't see the catalyst at the moment, uh, but that's how you do value investing. Hot or not, Herbrand? I'm going to go not hot. It's just too much iron ore exposure still here. Hot or not, Paul? Not hot. Nope.